Welcome to the Motormouth YouTube channel. I'm Zach. I'm Andrea. And we do full-length car reviews each and every week. And halfway through, we stop for a segment called Questions, Coffee, and Cars. We've spun it off. We're up to 109. To get a question in, how do you do that? Follow along on Instagram at Motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning, I put a post out asking for questions. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted, and we start the show. Time now for Questions, Coffee, and Cars. Your questions from Instagram. Have you heard of baby mode on the Kia Sportage or Sportage? I saw a review on YouTube about it. It sounded pretty cool. Wait a uh, second. First, before you answer the question, why are you watching other reviews? <laughs> You're not allowed. It's only us or nothing. It's okay. We'll get over it. So I, I mean, that's me. I'm being a baby. So it's baby mode. Baby see what mode. I did there, Andrew? I did see. Very good, Zach. Um, I haven't heard about it on the Sportage, the current one, but the 2025 Tucson hybrid and plug-in hybrid will have baby mode. What and is it, I got to know? What is baby mode? I had no idea what it was. Like you, you got me to look this all up. I didn't even know that it had it, but it's just smoother acceleration. If you have a child in the back, a baby and they're sleeping or a pet, it just keeps everything smooth and gentle for you. Or you could just drive smoothly. Just saying. You could. Now, this is going to be in the My Drive menu along with the other drive modes. Um, so you can click on that and, and use it. Uh, and then also there's going to be a green zone as well. So you can drive it in pure EV mode at lower speeds in urban areas, let's say. I find with kids, though, uh, baby mode, I find with kids the actual motion how much motion or bumpiness doesn't affect mm -hmm. them. Like you go yeah. over a bump, they don't wake up. It's just so long as there's constant movement. It may have been helpful with our dog. He, I used to put him in the cargo area and he would stand up and I'd say, sit down, Guinness, sit down. And he wouldn't sit. And so I was so careful. I was like you, you pulling you, away slowly. I wonder if baby mode might have helped. You know what you did, Andrea? You just drove smoothly. I did. Hello. I did. Hi, the best car review couple. Thank you. My friend is looking for a second SUV for his monthly work travel of 450 plus miles. He has a three row XC90 as the first car and is looking to replace the old R. DX, which has some problems. Could you please suggest some options? He looks for reliability, all-wheel drive, and comfort. Well, that's a wide spectrum, Andrea. Mm. Okay, what size do you want? Do you want I something know. the same as the RDX? Do you want a premium brand like an RDX? We need those details. So mm -hmm. um, I, I would say, you know, you could get the new RDX, the latest RDX. Yeah. Um, why not? I mean, it's a good car. I'm not sure what you, like, the thing is, I don't know what you want. Like, yes. what size, what, how much, all that stuff. What I would suggest for you saying just reliable, I'm just going off the top, you want something similar to an Acura. So maybe within that premium category, I would go for the Lexus NX. Mm -hmm. Whether you get a hybrid or a gas model, you've got reliability and comfort level. And then a lot of people with the Volvo XC60, it has that upscale interior. People who own Volvo say that the reliability has been good for them. Obviously, J.D. Power and Consumer Reports have different ideas about reliability with Volvo, well, but I like the XC60. If you have a Volvo, you know the deal, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're okay with the level of you know trips to the dealer, which is just being good, then great. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I you know, Go get another RDX. I don't know. Don't know how much you want to spend. The only thing I'm disappointed with the new RDX is that I thought it was going to get the same infotainment system as the updated MDX, and that's not the case. So I'm a little disappointed with the RDX and oh, Acura right now. By the way, we have the MDX uh, booked in September, mm -hmm. so we'll get to experience it with the new Dash. It's the Type S, but I'm okay with that because I really like the Type S. Same. Do you think Dash Cam should be a standard feature in cars these days? As modern cars already have rear camera for parking and some kind of front camera for traffic sign and lane recognition, I think just a small software tweak is required to utilize these existing cams to work as Dash Cams. I've always wondered why. They, 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 this, this got cameras in it already. Mm -hmm. Like 
-hmm. There's cameras down the side sometimes. You know, well, there, there's cameras down the side for parking, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And why they don't just have a, a little onboard computer that's always... And, and so I was thinking, um, you know, there's privacy because if it's a connected car, they're going to be able to get that footage. Well, you could have it where you just put your own SD card in. Sure. And then you're the only one that has access to that SD card. And it, and it goes over and erases the old one after like 10 days or something. I don't know if they would ever do it as standard equipment, but certainly have it available. Like you said, tweak what's already there um, and add it. Obviously not all driver assist technology is standard on all vehicles. You have to get a driving package of some sort. Um, but I think it would be great. Like some brands are using it now, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, of course, Tesla. But I don't know with Tesla or or any of the other brands, if there's a cost associated with that, if you have to pay extra for it. I know that the 2024 Teslas all offer it. I remember um, the first car I remember having it as it, an available to use it was the last generation Corvette. You could use the forward facing camera for being on the track. So mm -hmm. it could, re it would record you driving on the track and then it would put all the, um, information, the, all the data from the car, the, the the speed, the Gs, all that was superimposed on the image. And it also had a valet mode. So mm. if you valeted the car, it would start recording. So the valet is up to no good with your Z06. With your car, zipping around it's town. It's got to record it. I think, I, I don't understand why it's not being marketed. Yeah. I don't, I don't I'm get it. I mean, obviously aftermarket dash cams are being put in, but I think I it's a great idea. I think so it's just, a great idea to get one that's at least available on these vehicles. Just picked up our new GLE 450E this Monday and I was gonna thank you for your GLE video that gave me the final push to sign the contract. However, we found that the AC hasn't been blowing cold air since day one. We picked it up on a cool day, didn't test it, of course, yeah. Now it's back in the dealer's parking lot and we got an EQE loaner and it's such a disappointment because the interior feels like the Corolla I had years ago. Do you think it's because the battery takes up too much of the budget or because the piano plastic has come back in recent design languages? Take the Cayenne, for example. Well, I think oh. it's basically they're just trying to save costs because the batteries. Yeah, I, I don't agree with the direction Mercedes is going with a lot of their interiors. They use too much shiny hard plastic and the and especially the EVs are looking cheap. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. But I do clearly remember, Andrea, driving a Mercedes. I can't remember which one it was. And you and I, we couldn't get the air conditioning to work very well. No, nope. it might have been a GLE. There's something I remember with the auto setting and and the speed of the fan you can mm. you you can put it in auto but also adjust the fan anyway let the dealer work it through because sure. once it's working you got a great car oh man it's so good i can't believe how smooth and quiet it is uh acceleration was excellent I beautiful really like, interior oh beautiful interior you know in particular that eqe that you're talking about Zach and I did a review on it, and you're right. We were really shocked by the quality of materials being used in that particular model. Some of the other EQ models are mm. better than that. Yeah. That one, we were shocked yeah. by. If you go back and watch that video again, we were surprised. Yeah, but the GLE still has a really nice interior. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm showing you images of it right now. It looks really good. And that's got the uh, the Turbo 6. That's yeah. a great car. And what about the GLE? Sorry, not the Turbo 6, the inline 6. That's right. And remember, we just reviewed the GLA. In this subcompact luxury class, even that interior is quite beautiful. Mm. So... Just before we move on. Yeah. Um... They have had um, a real rethink at Mercedes-Benz around their EV strategy. They didn't take off like they had hoped. They spent a bomb getting all of these EQ models ready from the EQS to the SUVs. I mean, they you got to give them credit. They put a lot of effort into it and they put a lot of EVs into the marketplace. They weren't embraced the way they had hoped. And now they're backing off on that. But they've also admitted, Andrea, the design was not embraced either and so they're going to be redoing the egg shaped look into something mm -hmm. more palatable i think they're just going to redo the front and rear mm -hmm. bumpers to make it look a little bit better 
But, but they've admitted that. I found from the front and the back, the EQ models look okay. It's the profile. Looks like a jelly bean to me. I just can't get excited about the exterior design of those. Hello from Vancouver. Well, hello. We are shopping for an EV and my research to date has indicated that a heat pump is critical in EVs for efficiency, but I'm now hearing it may not be necessary for our climate in the lower mainland of BC. Would love your insights. And and please keep the EV reviews coming. Love your Nissan Aria and VW ID4 review. Well, coming up, we've got the Blazer EV. So stick around for that one. You know what? The more EVs we drive, the more I think the Aria is actually actually a pretty good product because it's got a really nice interior. Yeah. It's got good range. I think it looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um and the ID4, trying to remember, Andrea, it's only the base model of the ID4 doesn't get the heat pump, right? Uh, no, the heat pump in the U.S., not available right. in Canada. It's an add-on to every trim. One thing I would suggest around, because we live in, in a city that is very, very dense, mm -hmm. right? We don't have that far to go. So even if you lived at the farthest reaches of the suburbs and had to drive across the city every day, you would never use all the range mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of either of these cars. So you could get away without a heat pump because the efficiency doesn't matter. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're not driving huge distances mm -hmm. if, you, if you actually drive in the city. So you could get away without a heat pump, but a heat pump does help. I just feel like anything helps in the winter time or even in the summer when it's super hot i mean you are going to lose range if it's very hot and you have the air conditioning going if it's very cold um in vancouver i actually think a heat pump is perfect for our temperature in the winter because what what do we get down to zero degrees celsius maybe minus five rarely are we at the minus 10 overnight it that's, can happen i'm just going to translate that's celsius <laughs> celsius um so i would get a heat pump for sure in this climate because sometimes when it gets too cold then a heat pump actually doesn't work very yeah. well like mm -hmm. if you're if you're minus 20 celsius let's say in alberta um heat pumps are are not that great but, but you here can, i think it is but you can precondition the car so you get it all set up before you leave the house it's still plugged into the house it's drawing energy from the house that's nice and warm on the inside but I come back to how far are you going? And I don't think anybody in the greater Vancouver area is going to burn through their range mm -hmm. in one day. I don't think it no, would be I possible. Agree. No, but I think for resale value, yeah, a heat a pump idea. is good. Hi, Motormouth. Love the show. Thank you. What's up with car companies giving fix a flat instead of spare tires? Is it just cost or has tire technology gotten so good that it's not really necessary? I only say the latter because I can't remember the last time I had a flat tire. Thanks for everything. Well, basically it comes down to fuel efficiency. If you can eliminate, let's say like a 50 pound tire in the back of your vehicle, you'll get slightly Slightly better fuel economy and that's what it comes down to and also production costs too they want to eliminate that consumer reports did a, a quick study on it and they said that all the new vehicles that they've driven 40% uh, of them have uh, not do not have a temporary spare tire if you are old enough to remember the tires that were sold in the 70s and 80s flat tires were very very common mm -hmm. and now we have much much better technology it can happen though and the problem is if you get like a blowout on the sidewall or a, a, like a tire repair kit isn't going to do anything for you i was on a mustang event driving through the canyons in Malibu. And um, I was in no cell range, beautiful road, carving back and forth. I came around the corner and the rocks fall down and it went over the rock went boom, boom. And I was like, oh no, sure enough, tire pressure thing came on. And I put the, the bottle of goop in and the thing, I did the whole thing. And it, it, it basically was just, it just puked out. It was a mess Yeah. and it's all sticky. And I had, like I, I was, if I had a spare tire, I could have just changed it. I, I had to hike up the road. I finally got one bar on my phone. I said, send the cavalry. <laughs> and the cavalry came and took me away. 
And uh, so I, I agree. I, I, it's all for fuel economy. It's not what I would want. Some vehicles that don't come with it actually have the space for it. So you could buy one for yourself if you were concerned about it on long road trips and stick it in there. I think most of the time in the city, that sort of driving, if something happens to your tire, you're going to be okay. You're not going to feel like you're stranded, but it's the road trips that are the problem. Nope. So the other thing is that the car company is passing that off to you because mm -hmm. as soon as you roll off the lot and you get a, a, a flat tire, well, that's on you. It's got nothing to do with them. No. That's just bad luck, right? And so they push it onto you. And look at the new Nissan Kicks. It comes with a tire repair kit, but you can buy as an add-on a temporary spare tire. A I little would, bit cheeky. I It's cheeky. Mm -hmm. I would buy it. 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 Just test drive the Lexus RZ or RZ 450E. Know anything about range in the winter versus the summer? Well, shave off about 20 to 25%, depending on back to the question earlier, how cold it gets, right? You know, type below anybody who owns an EV, put what your experience has been. How much range do you lose in the winter time? We'd love to know. This would really help our viewer. It may not be related to that particular Lexus model, but it's super helpful. All the studies show 20 to 30%. Okay, this specific car does have an issue because it is the same underpinnings of Toyota's BZ4X or yeah. BZ4X. It um, the high speed charging, so you go to a supercharger, for example, um, or a DC fast charger and you plug it in. If you have to do that more than two times, it throttles back how fast you can put energy into the battery to help preserve the battery. So if you're somebody that does long road trips with an EV and you have to charge several times, mm -hmm. that is not the choice for you. However, if it's just a commuter car, it would be perfectly fine. The Subaru Solterra is the same. Yeah, that's it's the other one. all based on the same platform. Look, 80% of people charge their EVs at home anyway. Um, so if you're just talking about regular daily driving range, what you're going to lose in cold temperatures, um, the studies show that it can be as high as 30%. Hi, do you think the BMW X2 is a good car and pretty reliable? Wow, it's all new. We liked it. We like the X1. We like the X2. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> we like it. The only thing we didn't like was the auto stop start, which you couldn't shut off. It, it was... Um, yeah, you could. Uh, you could get it, around it. Yeah. In sport mode, mm -hmm. uh, it goes off on its own. But if you just want to drive it in regular, I don't know what it is, comfort mode or normal mode, uh, you've got to deal with that and it is jerky, but overall it's engaging and it's fun to drive and I think it looks much better than the previous well, model. Well, it's way bigger, right? Yeah. Um, they made it a lot bigger. The other one used to be like this real cropped kind of roof and now they've made it bigger. It's the same platform X1 as the Countryman and the X2 and the Countryman, we saw it at the dealer. We took the Mini mm. back yesterday and it is way bigger. So, yeah, you can get around it. You could just put it in sport or put it in S for subscribe. How about that? That's even better. Uh, one thing I don't like about the X2 is really the new interior design direction that BMW is going in with all that hard plastic that lights up for you. It's not my favorite, um, so make sure you like all that. Consumer Reports gives it a predicted reliability score of 55 out of 100 right now. Not the best, uh, but it is new. Yeah. I think they're they're hedging their bets because it's a new product. But if you look at, um, you know, Consumer Reports has given many very high scores over the last few years and BMW very high scores. It's just a new version of what they've kind of already done. So take that for what it is. And that's it for us. Follow along on Instagram at motormouth underscore Andrea. Every Sunday morning, I put a post out on Instagram asking for questions. Once we gather our questions, the post is deleted and we start the show. See you then. Thanks for watching.